leave us two minutes to fix it. <laughs> I don't think I see any. Oh, it's still turning. It'll tell it'll count down. It did that, but now it's turning. Okay, now we're good. Right? Yay! We're okay. We're live. And we got the one minute countdown. Do one minute. No, I mean, I'm not counting. Are you live right now? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> We're trying to get on it. Oh, yeah. It says, oh, yeah. There you are. Okay. There I am. I Hi, you. Lisa. I see you. There's 12 other people, too. There's Erica. There's Allison. Good evening. Um, Adriana. There's um, Elsa. Hi, guys. Sorry, we're not doing readings tonight, Adriana. What we're going to do is talk about something I think is vitally important to healing and, and recovering from trauma and really kind of stepping into life's work and stuff. So I'm, I'm, um, it is now 7 o'clock. We are officially live and on board. I apologize that I'm not doing readings tonight, but tonight Sorry. I'm going to do it uh, a Facebook Live next Wednesday evening. That's when we'll be doing some readings. What time is that one, Lisa? 6.30. At 6.30. So if you want readings, come on Wednesday night at 6.30, and we'll do a lot of fun stuff then. But tonight, um, we're going to talk about um, Centire. This is a little Centire snapshot, give you a little idea about what it is that I always talk about. And hi, Helen. Hi, Ellen. Hi, Addie and Tiffany. Um, hi, Ari. Uh, so I always talk about Centire because it's something that has helped me so much overcome um, just unspeakable, horrific, horrible events and tragedies and, and circumstances of my youth and my life and my um, uh, early 20s, especially those crazy days. <laughs> And a lot of crazy stuff. And so if you knew my story, you kind of know what I'm talking about. But I really did have a lot to heal from and a lot of personal processing that I had to do um, in order to be able to do the work that I do. So tonight is a little Centire snapshot. We're not doing readings tonight, but this is just as important. I promise. It's really exciting. Um, now, the way that I got started doing uh, emotional what Centire is, is an emotional energy release process. And it is based on the principle that we stuff all of our feelings in and those feelings can, um, they can kind of create a consciousness that we're not quite always aware of um, because of old fears and doubts. And, and really all of us have, if we've had any trauma in our life at all, we've got a little PTSD going on. So I had kind of a lot of it going on and I didn't really know it. I mean, I wasn't officially diagnosed with PTSD. I just knew that I wasn't functional. I wasn't functional in my life. I um, was making choices that were self-destructive. I was self-loathing. Um, I was hurting myself and other people. Um, I, I really didn't know to how to handle my emotions at all. I really thought that life just happened to me and that my emotions were were what I was supposed to decide from on on what to 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 do going going forward or action in my life. All my action came from my feelings and my emotions rather than from my intention or my desires. So um, I was a mess. I mean, I was in a lot of pain. I was in a lot of pain, and I had a daughter. Uh, I got I found out I was pregnant in rehab. So that'll give you a little tiny hint on how much pain I was in. I had been doing crystal meth for four and a half years, trying to block out all of the pain that I was in and all the um, trauma that I had experienced from my past and my teenage years and my youth and all of that. So I was really trying to block it out and instead of dealing with it. So when I was coming off the drugs and I found out I was pregnant in rehab and I believe that little wonderful spirit came in to save my life, I knew that I had to do something different than I'd been doing all along to try to heal myself so that I could be a good mother to her. And of course, rehab helped a lot. The principles of the program that I was in at the time helped a lot. Um, but the one thing that I really wasn't getting out of it was 
what do I do with the feelings? If I'm not supposed to react from them when I'm upset or scared or angry, if I'm not supposed to lash out or hide or run, you know, it's always in fight or flight mode. And if I wasn't supposed to do that, so the counselors are telling me that's inappropriate behavior, then I had no idea what to do with that energy and those feelings underneath all that. Because I, I just had no idea how to process them, how to deal with them, how to even experience them, to have them. Um, and so I was I was a mess. I was just a mess. I met a wonderful woman, friend of mine in San Diego, and she introduced me to a fellowship where they would help people process emotions and they called it emotional release. And um, but these were long classes. These were like classes that were hours long. And um, but it was a similar experience to what Centire is. Um, it had a lot of other aspects to it. It was sort of a spiritual organization. So it had a lot of other sort of aspects to it as well. But this one piece that I got out of it was, oh my God, there is a way to process emotion. And Ari, I'm glad you're on here. I hope that you stick around because there is a moment um, in the last few years that you happened to call me on the phone in, a, in the middle of one of my processes. And um, it was when, when my dad was sick with cancer before he passed away. Um, so I'll talk about that in a little bit too. Let me make a note of that because that was, that was trippy. It was so trippy that I remember Ari saying to me, um, pardon me, pardon me. <laughs> um, the lights make my nose run. Ari was saying to me, Kelly, do you need me to dial 911? And I'm like, no, I'm just processing. Um, so what, once I figured out there is some, something that you can actually do with these feelings, then I knew I just needed to really keep doing that and working on myself and healing these traumas to where, you know, at first I was, was trying to heal from something that I was a victim of. Um, and I remember in, in one process that I was doing coming from not only forgiving the person that victimized me, but actually thanking them because I had come to such a realization after the emotion was released. I, I, it was like I was on a higher level of understanding and consciousness. And I don't think I would have gotten to that point if that experience hadn't happened. And if I hadn't processed that so that I could move through it and have this really great sort of insight and understanding. So when it can get you to a point where you're actually thanking your, your victimizer, you know, at, for that, for giving that experience in your life that brings you to an even higher level, that is some serious healing. So, and I've never, ever looked back on that person since that day with anything but good, goodwill. Like I've, I feel so complete with that. I'm also able to help other people who are in some similar situations um who you know i was a youth director for nine years so i was able to help my high schoolers when they would come in and i could just tell something was wrong and i could you know talk to them and i could understand i could help a lot of young girls who were in bad situations um after i after i healed that energy now before i healed that energy all that did was freak me out i remember i worked at a daycare and we had all kinds of little kids and I would tell the owner of the daycare, like, oh, my gosh, this little boy has a bruise. I'm scared. Some, somebody's hurt him. I know somebody's hurt him. And, and she's like, no, no. You know, she had to explain to me not to overreact to seeing a bruise on a child to, to teach me what was actual signs of abuse and what was just normal childhood running around with a big toddler head banging it on things. So, um, but I would feel freaked out. I would feel terrified for this child and I would overreact. And so... Um, and I would do that in other situations too. Um, so when you find that you're you're overreacting, if you, if your reaction is out of proportion to the current situation, and you can catch yourself doing that, then you know you need some release here. You know that that's coming from a place of of the past and of history, and you might not even be aware of it. You know, um, I'll give you a, a couple of examples about that. But what do I mean by emotional energies? So um, we all have emotions. We are supposed to respond to life in a certain way. In the caveman days, our fight and flight um, response was, was needed and necessary to survive. Um, so when a danger comes, you're supposed to feel fear and you're supposed to either fight or flight. You're supposed to have that. And so we still are designed that way. And what happens if our 
there may no longer be saber-toothed tigers, but we're still responding in our body and mind as if there are. So what happens with that, if there's no outlet, if there's no um, appropriate way to process that, it just gets stuffed in the cells of our body and it gets stored there. And the cells, you know, I was really kind of realizing like in quantum physics and stuff, when they talk about the space that's in um, atoms and in the finest particles are all, there's a lot of space in there. And so each cell, we have a, between 50 to 100 trillion cells in our body and each one of them is capable of holding six gigabytes of emotional information. That's 600 trillion gigabytes of an emotional in information that your body can hold. And you might not even be aware of it because you're up here in your mind thinking about something and you're experiencing the world and suddenly you have a response. And they can measure this physiologically and they can do it on thermal imaging. So this is a mine. I didn't, I didn't um, design this little chart. I found it on the internet and you can look it up just uh, Googling. Uh, I think it's just emotional energy colored chart or something like that. But this is what they can measure in your body when you're experiencing something. So check out a couple of things. Let's look at um, let's look at anger where it shows up in the body. Do you see where's your little camera? There's do you see the hands? I'm trying to get the light not on it. There we go. Look at the hands. They fire up. Look at the mouth. <laughs> it fires up. You know, when people stuff anger in their body, they tend to get heart attacks a lot. This is why people hit because they store it in their hands and you just want to discharge that energy and you feel so angry, you want to hit something or shout and scream. So that's how I was always rageaholicking. You know, when I was married, that's all I knew to do was scream and yell and hit things. And so did my husband. So um, that's all we knew to do. I had no idea how to appropriately process uh, anger. Check out this one disgust. You know that saying that they say, oh, that left a bad taste in my mouth. It actually really does. Look at the mouth. So when people go, ooh, it's all energy right here. That's energy in the cells of your body. When it connects with your thoughts and your mind, it makes your body respond. Check out um, depression. Now this is important for you guys out there because depression is when this, the energy is stuffed so far down in the cells that you can't even feel it anymore. And if, it, if it's, that's what the word depress means, it's to press in. So if you've ever experienced real clinical depression, I completely understand it. I've had years of bouts of it in my life. Um, and people are just like, just be happy. Oh, just get up and get out of bed and, you know, change your mind and go for the day. And it, it, when you're really experiencing clinical depression, you, you, you just can't, you can't, it's, it can be paralyzing. Why? Because there's hundreds of thousands of pounds of emotional energy stuffed in your cells and it, it makes you heavy and slow and it can be paralyzing. And so I had depression, I had anxiety, I had panic attacks. I had a panic attack at that daycare I worked at once and luckily all the kids were sleeping, but I, I didn't know what to do because I had no idea what was happening with my body. And um, luckily I, I, a friend was available to help me over the phone, but um, I was having a panic attack. Now that I know what processing energy is and what it feels like, then I can do it with intention and I'm not afraid of it. It doesn't make me think I'm dying anymore. I promise you, you're not gonna read in the paper tomorrow, Kelly died of feelings yesterday. It's just not gonna happen. <laughs> our bodies are actually designed to do this. They're designed, but our society is not. Our society tells us not to feel. In fact, they sell tons of products on the market every day to make sure that you don't have to feel anything. So, um, and the word centaur means to feel and they're called feelings. They're not called ignorings. They're called feelings. You're supposed to feel them. I was working with a young woman once and I took her through a session and um, later on we were walking around and, and or was it before, it might've been before her session. And she sort of said, she was telling me some of the depression and the issues that she was having. And, and we were taking her dogs for a walk and she loved to work with dogs, but it was stopping her from achieving her goal of being uh, raising and training, um, uh, what do you call them, service dogs. So because she gets so emotional and freaked out and panicky that she wouldn't know that energy would transfer to the dog. So I was talking to her about this process and she said to me, 
well, so what do I do with the feelings? And I go, you feel them. And she went, oh, 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 oh. Like the realization of that's what they are. They, they have a sensation to them. You can feel them. And that, that's what you're supposed to do. That's why they're called feelings. So centire is a Latin word for the word feeling. So when you're doing a session, and now I've, I've taken all that I've learned from this and all that I've did in my own healing and all, all the spiritual work that I've done, and I've asked my guides and spirits to help me help people feel their feelings. Just, just, just direct me on how we can do this. And, you know, I went to college for all kinds of psycho psychology, and I've learned a lot of the psychology about it all. And, um, and really just did so much of the healing process myself. In fact, I still do occasionally when I need to. I'm going through a lot right now. My family is going through a lot right now. So, you know, I'm having to use this work on myself still. Um, it's really nice to have someone else who's trained in doing it to be with you to do it. Uh, because you, when you're doing the process, you're in your body, not your head. And when you're coaching the process, you're in your head, not your body. So, um, so what it is, is it's a method where <clears throat> you can sit still, you know, when, when you, you're taught to meditate, you have your hands up like this or like this on your lap. And the reason is, is that you have so many sensors in your hands that if you have them face down on your lap, um, you're more aware of your body. So when you meditate and you want to kind of leave your body and you want to kind of just let go of all those sensations, you have your hands up. That's why they do that. But this process, you have your hands down because you want to be aware of your body because it's all body work. In fact, a lot of times when I'm doing a session with someone, I'll have them tap their legs to help them come back in their body or put, this is kind of a trip too, when we're doing emotional process and they're about to feel something and I, I can tell that they're not wanting to do it. So they're leaving, they're spacing out, they're leaving their body. If I just gently put my hand like this, their soul comes right in their body. <laughs> and they, so they start going, I, I won't even be barely touching, just holy. And they'll be, ooh, they'll start, emotion will come up again because they can't leave. They got to stay in their body. So it's a process where you're going to become completely aware of your body when you can learn to identify an emotion or a feeling or a sensation in your body and you can locate it and you can concentrate on it. Then we do a breathing process where it can be released from your body and your head, hands and feet and face. Those are outlets for energy. So a lot of people experience tingling hands when they're doing the breathing work because the breathing, the breath work itself it, um, oxygenates your, your uh, cells as well. But a lot of it's energy moving. Um, it wants to come up and out your face a lot. This is how we release energy. We put energy into our bodies this way and we can release energy this way. So you have to do the whole process with an open mouth. Um, and that's why it's, it gets difficult to do it on your own. So having a coach there really helps to, um, you know, to make sure that they are, uh, hi, Tiffany, oh, so cute. to make sure that they're keeping their mouth open and releasing energy. Sometimes when the energy comes up, tears come, you know, um, we have a, a pillow. You can scream in the pillow. You can punch a pillow. You can let energy go like that. And if you can get on my website and read some of the testimonials about people who've done, I say there's two types of people in the world. There's pre-centire people and post-centire people. Because if you read the testimonials about people who've done the process, um, it can be absolutely life-changing. Even one, one session can be life-changing. But when you really start doing it, you can do it on a daily basis for your life. So, can, yeah. Can, I ask, can mm -hmm. you also mention how... Um... You're not talking about anything, but I think it's right. important that you just give trigger words. Yeah. Okay. So one of the methods um, in order to help people get in touch with those emotions is it's not about the story. When you go to a counselor, the reason they want you to talk about your experience or your story is because it, if it brings up to mind, you might start feeling some feelings and then it, with expressing and crying, you're going to release some of that emotional energy. This process goes right to the energy. So it's really not about the story. It's not, it's not talk therapy. And, and I rarely ever, ever ask about the actual events. Um, occasionally I will use trigger words. And so when we get the body and the mind connected and in a state of real awareness of the body, and even if the, the client is not sure what they're feeling, 
I will start with, with the trigger words and I will say, okay, I'm gonna say some words one at a time and I just want you to sit with it for a few minutes. Just sit with that word and just see if it triggers anything. So I'll say, how about guilt? And then I'll wait and they'll be like, Oh, okay. So then, then, okay, where do you feel it? And let's breathe through it. So, or I'll say, how about if they say, no, I don't feel anything. Like, okay. How about um, frustration? How about sadness? How about unworthiness? That's a, that's a deep one. A lot of times the one of the, one of the biggest trigger words that we use is disappointment because people feel disappointed for so many reasons. And I think in, in society, we're talked out of feeling disappointed. Like for, you know, this is a moment where you get to just be human and feel. And I think if we go around trying to express disappointment, it's almost like people are disappointed in us for feeling disappointed. So it's not really a very allowed emotion out in public. And that's why it's a, it's a deep trigger one for a lot of people disappointment. You get disappointed for all kinds of reasons because a marriage didn't work out because you, you, you wanted a baby and you can't have one. I mean, that's a huge, deep disappointment that we just have to walk through life getting over. Um, so those are the trigger words and there's a whole list of them and we just go through and we really find and locate that emotional energy so you can be with it. I call it give the devil its 15 minutes when you're with it and you let it express and it starts to show up then the breathing techniques and the text te techniques we do process it. And people tell you all the time, let it go. If you feel sad, let it go. You feel upset, let it go. But they don't tell you how to do it. Letting it go means allow it to release, allow it to leave your body. That's how you let it go. You allow it to come up and out. So that's the idea of centaur is the process of allowing that energy to move. And that chunk of energy that comes up and out, once it's gone, it's gone forever. You might have more and other layers to do, but you can heal things with this and you can heal things completely with this. When I talk about, you know, it, because it's personal in my, uh, with other people, I don't share this story too much publicly, but when I talk about certain events of my youth, people are amazed that I'm like, oh yeah, no, I've completely forgiven them. Oh yeah, sure, no, you know. I can talk about it with other people, share this story with no trigger or charge. Um, there are still things I'm working through that do have trigger and charge. And there's things that are complete that I feel really at peace about. And that's because of this. Okay, what other questions do we have? We said, um, so that's why I created. I created because I wanted to heal myself and it worked so well. And I started realizing how I could help other people with it. So I, I began to, to try to figure out how I could do it in a short session where you walk in and leave a different person. You leave with a different energy, a different vibration than you came in with that will never go back to that. And we, we, we designed a two hour session. That's a private session. We're going to let you know how you can do it on Zoom or on, on um, video chat, but uh, virtual, uh, you can still get a Centire appointment virtually and they work really well. Um, we're doing a special price. So because of this COVID thing, and I don't want people to miss out on an opportunity just because life is getting really, really hard right now. So we're doing a special price of only two forty-five. The code is, I love Lisa making her safe at home code. Safe so at home two. safe at home two, the number two. So if you want to book and you want the discount, go to either our Facebook page and our website. And the session is Centire Set, Virtual Centire Session. And use the code safe at home to, to book. I'll give you the second price. Okay. So that's why I created it. I wanted to help people. And it's amazing. It helps people so much. And, I, you know, Lisa, my manager over here, has been working with me for years. And it wasn't until about, what, two years ago you were willing to do it? Cause she knew it's, it's, it's tough. It's amazing, but it's toughy. It's tough. It's hard. Yeah. How was your session? It oh, was, it was great. No, yeah. It was great. But it, the hardest part was just allowing myself to be vulnerable, to let go. That's the hardest part. And that's why a private session with a coach mm -hmm. who's done it themselves a thousand times can get you there. Who's trained uh, to, to help you get there uh, to the place where you can be vulnerable. And it does feel vulnerable. But it's it's yeah. over in two hours. It's over in an hour and a half, really. And then it's, it's quick. I mean, it's, yeah. it goes really fast. 
Yeah, it goes really fast. Most of my yeah. clients don't even realize they've been sitting yeah. there for two hours. And I'm like, because eyes closed, mouth open, mouth ear, open, ear. eyes closed. You know, um, yeah, you're 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 being. And the reason that we have our eyes closed is so that you can be aware of your body and you're not distracted by anything in your surroundings. Mouth open so the energy can begin to release. That's the hardest part for people to do is keep the mouth open because they always want to go. And why is that? Because they can feel that energy coming up and they want to stop it. They don't want to feel it. So, and then we're very used to clamping down and do you want to tell people also what people might experience during a centire? So, um, I think, hold on, I have to, I have to pull my nose. <laughs> okay. Um, I think I wrote, I think I have this down. Um, oh, no, it's in this. What they might experience. Your face, head, the hands and feet are outlets for this energy. So it, as it moves out of your body, you might feel warm, tight, or tingly. Your lips or throat might get tight. Sometimes your hands get tight like this. It's part of the oxygenation as well, but it's also energy moving. And that's what scares people the most because if you, if you don't feel like you have control over the muscles and you don't realize this too shall pass, it's going to pass. That's why it's great to have a coach because they'll remind you, don't worry, this is normal. I had a woman whose hands and, and mouth was getting tight, and she goes, am I having a stroke? <laughs> no, just energy moving. But I can understand why it's disturbing, you know, to feel that because it's it's different and odd. Um, but your throat gets tight. Your ears might feel hot. You get a little lightheaded, too, also from the breathing. Uh, might get a bit of a headache for a few minutes. The dizziness is hard for people to handle because we are – um, we are trained to think that if I'm dizzy, that's very alarming. Something's wrong with my brain. So, but the dizziness is just the breath and energy moving and it passes and we just do a little tap in the ground, a little hand on the head. Um, and it's really funny because I, I go through four pages of preparation to prep somebody for their session and they still leaving going, that wasn't at all what I expected. So it's hard to really explain unless you're actually you've actually done it um and it's amazing what your body can do you feel things you've never really know ever felt before in your body uh -huh. you know um when you feel energy i when i do it for myself i'm going to finish your question and then i'll tell i keep skipping around <laughs> <laughs> when i okay so for example um your ears might get hot you might like feel lightheaded your heart pounder race a little bit Occasionally, people feel nauseous. They hold a lot of energy in their stomach, especially energy like disgust or um, shame is often held real low in the gut, um, and that can cause a lot of nausea. Um, so sometimes that that feeling's there. Um, it, sometimes people just feel physical discomfort, especially men. That men hold on to their energy a little differently, and. And it can cause, if you hold on to it for too long, it's going to cause physical ailments and injuries and sicknesses. But men tend to process more like, um, at least at first, oh, now my shoulder hurts. Okay, now that, once you concentrate on it, it hurts even more and more and more. We're breathing, we're moving the energy, it goes back down. Oh, now my, now my knee hurts, now my leg hurts. So it can move around, your energy can move around. Um, but we're going to use breath work to blow it out. And then that energy releases and then the sensation goes back down. It's called intervals. Um, so all of the things that you're experiencing in your body as you're processing this energy may feel different than anything you've ever felt before, but it's all normal for this energy. And it, it does get uncomfortable. No wonder people avoid it. But this is an amazing process to release all kinds of energy. Karen has a question. Okay. Does the Centire session help with chronic pain? Yes, it does. Um, the, I don't pretend to be a medical doctor, so um, I don't um, I don't do it as a medical cure or a medical treatment. It just seems to be one of the side effects are that it eases pain and eases chronic pain because chronic pain can be a response to the cells holding on to extra energy. Um, there was a woman who came back a long time ago. She came to me and she, she didn't come to me for this reason, but 
uh, found out that she had diverticulitis because while she was doing her session, she kept feeling pain in her lower abdomen. Um, now, I don't know that everybody believes in this kind of thing, but I do believe in multiple lives. And so I kind of tuned in psychically and I could see a vision of her in her past life being stabbed with a dagger in the lower abdomen repeatedly. And so it was almost like her soul carried that energy into this lifetime. So once she released us, she had two sessions with me and, and it was gone. Six years of dealing with diets and doctors. And and so I, I again, I can't claim to cure anything. Uh, all I know is it certainly can't hurt. It's not gonna hurt it more. It's going to make things better. And it's going to um, release energy that you've been holding on to so that it can, you know, any all the cells then, if you wanna go to Reiki after, if you wanna get, acupuncture after so you know all that chi can move back into those cells i always tell people in my prep sheet after they're done with their session i tell them um take it easy the rest of the day you might want to take a nice walk or bath but don't do anything too strenuous or intense no heavy or heated discussions and no scary movies tonight because anything that you bring into your consciousness after your cells have released energy they're kind of raw and open and so you really just want to kind of solve them and you kind of want to just Put a, almost like a salve on them to to take care of them and not put negative energy back into those cells. So um, once the cells burst open, release energy, then you do kind of want to take care of yourself the rest of that day. A lot of people wake up in the morning. I remember my real first big session. I walked outside the next day and I was like, my God, the sky is bluer. The trees are greener. Like everything just looks brighter. Like I was much more acutely aware of of my my life, myself, my surroundings. I wasn't like all blocked out with pain all, all the time. And so- That um, reminds me when your uh, Allie had her session, yeah. she had read a testimonial that after her entire session the next day, her relatives couldn't believe how different she was. Yeah, people tell us that. Mm -hmm. They go, I went and saw my grandfather the next day and he's looking at me like, what mm -hmm. happened to you? Mm -hmm. You look like you've just been to the beach or you've, you know, like, People, you, you can physically look different because, you know, they did a study, um, in one of my psychology classes, I don't remember the name of the study, but I thought it was really fascinating, um, where they went to nursing homes and they got life stories and histories of people's lives. And there comes a time in our life where we either change or we don't. It's That's what the midlife crisis is. And they studied the facial features of the people who once they hit that moment in their life, never really did change, you know? Yeah, maybe when they didn't have their dream job yet or they, you know, were in a bad relationship or whatever and they, they just didn't change it. And then what they look like physically at the end of, toward the end of their life, their wrinkles, facial features, everything was different than those who had made that change and, and made a change for the better to make their life happier. Let, let's say they, they decided to go for their dreams and travel the world or get that dream job or marry that person or whatever they, they chose to do. Um, they did a study and the facial features are completely different in the old people that didn't live their dreams as opposed to the people that did. And that's because of the energy. It, it affects everything. It affects our, our cells, our spines, our, you know, our facial features, everything. So it's, oh, can I, real yeah. quick, I want to piggyback on Karen, the chronic pain one, uh -huh. Victoria Lynn said, and it sounds like when before her centire appointment, she came in and had shooting pain on her right side. So she says it's so hard. She's like, but that energy felt like it wouldn't come out, but I have been feeling so free inside and the shooting pain on my right side didn't come back. Yay. Thank you very much for sharing that. Yeah. It's when we're holding on to stuff that it causes us pain. And when we let it go, and it's really funny because at, sometimes you'll feel when we get in touch with an emotion, it'll be like here, like, go ahead. yeah, oh, good, save that one. And then as you're breathing it out, it'll move up to, then you'll feel it in your chest. Now I feel here, now, now I feel it in my throat. And now my face, and I can tell when you feel it in the face, the tears come, the, the face gets red. And, and so it'll be gone from here. Stomach aches go away, back aches go away. You know, a lot of times it'll move in the shoulder and then your shoulders get really, really tight. And people are like, oh, my shoulders are killing me. I'm like, yep, just breathe through it, breathe through it, breathe through it. Oh, now my neck hurts. I know, breathe through it. And gone and everything feels better. It's amazing. So Kayla Flora says, how do we handle those fresh feelings after a session, especially taking care of three little ones? 
LOL. Mm -hmm. Would their energy affect mine? And I definitely feel their energy on the daily. And then Erica says, would this be helpful for postpartum issues? Yeah, definitely postpartum issues, any depression issues. Again, I'm not going to say I can cure depression because there might be a chemical imbalance, but it certainly can help with that. I believe that I had a chemical imbalance. I'm going to answer the first this question first and then go back to the next, the last one, the first one. Um, and But my personal belief is, is that our consciousness creates the cells in our body to respond. So um, I was born with ADD, whatever the people want to call it. Okay, the earthlings call it that. I think it's my gift, um, but it shows up in ways that they describe and label as ADD. Now, in order for me to be able to do my purpose in life, I think my soul had to come into my little fetus body and had to design itself out of that consciousness of my soul. And therefore my brain had to be designed in a way that the earthlings label it that. So I think that your physicality is created out of your consciousness, not the other way around. That's why I think it can help with mental illnesses. It can help with depression, postpartum, all kinds of things. Again, you know, you've got to take responsibility for your medical well-being, but it certainly, again, can't hurt. It can help a lot. Going back to the question about the kids. Yeah, I would suggest that when you sign up for a session, please ask your loved ones, friends, families for, for some support on that day because you really you want to set the rest of your day up where you can relax so ask a friend to come in and, and help with the kids or you know give you a break um definitely you know ask for support and set it up so that you can relax um what's most likely to happen however is that if you do have to be around the kids or whatever is that you're much calmer so they're going to be much calmer mm -hmm. And, and then they're kind of, they will respond out of that energy. And instead of, um, you know, someone, um, you know, if they'd start acting up or one of the kids throws something or drops something or whatever, instead of that reactive energy, you're going to be kind of like, that's all right. We'll clean it up. Oh, now don't hit your brother. Come on. Let's love. You I know? also think satire is really good especially for mothers because we carry so much guilt oh the guilt on the daily is that what you processed a yeah. lot on yours yes so lisa has a really good point it's so good for mothers because we as women as moms we carry so much guilt our, our dream when we have a baby is to be the perfect mother so we never screw up our kids and we just cannot be perfect people and so that's not a reality we're never going to be perfect mothers but when, but because of that, we want to so bad, we do something we think is screwing up our kids. And so we hold on to so much guilt. We think it's our job to make our kids happy. So even as they grow up, we still want them to be happy. And if they're not, we think we've not done our job. We have so much guilt. The problem is, is that when you hold on to that guilt, that's a very low vibration energy, by the way. It's very uh, diminishing for yourself. But then now you're parenting from guilt. So your parenting actually becomes worse. So you're feeling guilty. You're trying to do a better job, but because it's such a low vibration to be parenting from, you do a worse job and then you feel more guilty and it just compounds. And it's like, it's hard to set boundaries when you feel guilty. It's hard to say no to your children when they want something, when you feel guilty about something you did a year ago. So it, it really can release you to be at a, at a very peaceful state in your parenting. And so that, again, when I was talking um, in the beginning how about how I used to just respond from emotion. Emotion told me what to do. Now it's like, okay, I'm feeling this, but I'm not going to shout, even though I'm angry or upset or sad or whatever. I'm not going to respond. I'm going to think about if I didn't feel that upset energy, if I felt peaceful, how would I behave right now? Because I want to behave in a way that's in line with what I want to create, which is peace, well-being, and not from a place of guilt, you know, anger, depression. Guilt is just such a big one it's for us. It's a huge one. It's so, it's so diminishing. It's so destructive. And it's so pointless. It does zero good. Zero. The only time guilt does any good is when you need to make an apology and it leads you to that and you just do it and be done with it. Other than that, 
it doesn't do any good. And the whole point of making the apology is to let go of guilt, but that's not what we do. And we over apologize. I always tell everybody, unless you burn down my house or sleep with my husband, you don't have to apologize to me. And I don't have a husband. So <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we over apologize because of guilt from something else, you know? So great one. Thank you, Lisa. Yeah. Now I wanted to tell a little story about these kids that I was babysitting for a friend of mine. And, uh, and so she had a one year, one and a half year old boy and a two, three year old little girl. And the, um, you know how it is, we had lunch and so I'm just sweeping up after lunch. And so the kids are right here behind me and you know, you hear something and then you hear the scream and you turn around and the little boy's got his hand like this on his arm. And I picked him up and I looked at the little girl and of course she's like, you know, scared she's gonna get uh, shoot out. And I said to her, honey, can you just sit there a moment? Let me take care of your brother. I'll be right back. And so I, I move his hand and he's got a perfect little three-year-old bite mark right there. So I get him all doctored up and off he runs to play. And then I come to her. Now, this is the little girl that bit her brother on the arm. And I said to her, um, can you please tell me what happened? And she said, he threw my sippy cup. And I said, oh, I'm sorry. I said, how did that make you feel? And she goes, and I said, did you feel mad? And she goes, and I go, okay, where did you feel mad? Where do you feel it? Where do you feel mad? And she goes, so I tuned in with my body and I could feel a burning sensation in my stomach. So I put my fingers on her tummy and I said, do you feel mad here? Does it hurt there? And she kind of went, okay, close your eyes and just feel your tummy. It's okay to feel mad right now. Feel your mad tummy. And um, I go, remember when he threw your sippy cup and it made you really mad. And I just want you to feel that for a moment. And I had her breathe. I go, take a little breath with Miss Kelly. Let's breathe. <sighs> and I could see as she was feeling the madness, that the anger, it was coming up, the madness, the anger, it was coming up. Her chest got red. She continued to breathe. I could see she wanted to swallow. I had her breathe instead. And then when it hit her face, her little face got red and then the tears came. And she just kept breathing and crying. And then when she stopped, she just opened her eyes. She wiped her tears. And she just kind of looked at me. And I said, you feel better now? And she goes, yeah, I do. And I said, how about you come talk to Miss Kelly first next time you're mad about, uh, about your brother? And she goes, OK. And I said, would you like to apologize to him now? And she goes, no. I go, OK, well, you let me know if you change your mind. So an hour later, we were playing a game on the floor. And she just looked at me and said, Miss Kelly, I would like to apologize to him now. And I said, OK. And she said, I'm sorry I bit you. And he goes, OK. Then the next time I babysat, we were they were at the counter having their snack. And they had this like cool thing they could stand on. And so they were next to each other. And he was eating all his bananas. And he saw his sister still had some, so he went out to grab hers. She put her hand back like this, and all of a sudden she pulls it in. And she goes, Miss Kelly, can we talk? So she was learning not to react from feeling, but instead process it. And instead of getting punished for it, she was taught that it's okay to feel angry and that she doesn't have to hit her brother. She has a tool now that as a three-year-old, if a three-year-old can do centaur, y'all, you guys, you guys can do it. And um, that's how powerful it can be. It can teach your kids. So, so when you come home all zinned out and your kids are acting up, you can use these tools with them. You can teach them to feel their feelings. I mean, how much better is family life going to be in line with what you want to create, peace and harmony around the home, when you've got a tool like this? And I send you home with a whole write-up on how to do it at home and how to practice it. After you've had a a session or two in person, you can, you, I mean, sometimes I'll be driving down the street and I hit the red light, red light. Well, that's frustrating, right? I haven't driven anywhere for a while now. Yeah. <laughs> just realize, except I'm not. But if you pull over and breathe through your frustration. You can actually expand time. You'll get back on the road, wrap, green light, green light, green light, because your energy is creating your surroundings. So, um, can you, I think it's interesting because you keep saying breath work. Uh huh. Can you show them yeah. what, that, not just a, Right. But like what, yeah. what breath work looks yeah, like. Yeah, it looks, it looks, it looks it's getting weird, but I do it with you when we're in person. So, or when we're on um, doing it so that you don't feel weird, but in between um, having just your mouth open while you're, while you're getting in touch with your feelings, I feel like I have to sneeze. I'm sorry. I had a tickle. <laughs> Hold on a second. <laughs> oh, it's live. It's live. 
<laughs> Nothing I can do about it. <laughs> you can't, can't like edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here's what the breath looks like. So normally you're just breathing, open mouth. Then if you start feeling a sensation that needs to be processed, I will, and it starts getting acute, meaning the, the intensity starts going up. I will say, All right, take a big breath and blow. And it's like you're blowing a big cake of candles. And you're going to. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I'm sorry. Is that wrong? No, it's that like just funny what you said. Big cake of candles. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I was trying to shorten it. <laughs> <laughs> so if the energy, let's say it's in your chest, you're going to imagine when you take the in breath that it's grabbing the energy from there and blowing it out <sighs> really hard. Um, the harder you blow, the more energy you move. And when people are really getting in touch with some sadness and stuff, it's, it's hard to do. So you just little. <sighs> little puffs of air, especially if your throat gets tight or if your face gets tight, you just breathe until the, you imagine that breath goes right to that spot, grabs the energy and blows it up. If it's way down, it's big breath, you know, really hard. It's amazing how that breathing grabs that energy. It, and grabs, this, it grabs that emotion. Yeah. And it is crazy. amazing how it grabs it and mm -hmm. pulls it out. And if you've got real stubborn energy that's been in there a long time, at first it it doesn't feel like it's working. And then all of a sudden you're realizing mm -hmm. it must be working because I I'm feeling worse right now. Mm -hmm. And it, as it, as you become more and more aware of it and it releases from the cells and starts to present into your, your, you know, neuron, your, your nerve endings mm -hmm. almost. It's like you can physically feel it. And um, yeah, that breath work and people try to stop breathing because they don't, they feel it coming. They're like, and I'll just take a breath and blow. <sighs> I remember one guy, a man, oh man, he was, he was fantastic. He was doing everything, but he did not want to take a breath and blow because he, and I, I go, so he goes, can I just, can I just uh, keep my mouth open? And I go, okay, keep your mouth open. And he goes, never mind. Can I take a breath and blow? And I go, yeah. And he, and he goes, you're killing me. You're killing me. And, and he did it. And he wrote me a big long letter after saying how much um, that helped him that session. So that's, and then in between intervals, so now, you know, you're paying attention to an energy, you're opening your mouth, you're doing some breath work to dislodge that from here, it's going to move, 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 and it's going to feel worse for a moment. So that number, I, we call it a, I give it a number between one and 10 in intensity so that we know where you're at and it'll go up, 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 <sighs> you're blowing it out, blowing it out. For me, oftentimes my face starts hurting really bad and I start going like this because I just want it to come out. And pff, so I'm blowing and I'm doing this and it's like the cells in your face hurt. It's really yeah. weird. And then, and then it's gone. And then that goes back down. And so the second breath we do is a cleansing breath. So I go, okay, open mouth in and out. Most people are used to taking cleansing breaths, but they think of it differently. They think of it in through the nose and out through the mouth. And the reason that is that when you're doing like yoga or meditation, you will want to breathe through your nose. Our nasal passages have sensors that can calm our body down. But when you're doing centire, we don't want your body to calm down. We want your body to emote. That's what the word emotion means, you guys. It means to emote. So we don't want to calm your body down. So um, Kelly Reynolds says, as an empath, I do that all the time. I think yeah, she's yeah, talking about the, uh, oh yeah, I'm way behind. Okay. Uh, uh, Kelly Hardecker says, I think the blowing also helps activate the vagus, the vagus nerve. That's, that's not the one in the nose though, right? Oh, I don't know. No, I don't think so. But she might be right. Mm -hmm. Tell us more. Yeah. Tell us more about that. I love to learn more, more, more and more and more. What's the vagus nerve and where is it? And what does it do? And what, maybe that's yeah. what makes it and so magical. I think it's important to look, like there's a lot of crying. There's, yeah, you know, there pillows, is. There might be a bucket. Oh, yeah. Be... We go through an entire box sometimes of mm -hmm. tissue. And I'll tell Lisa, I need more tissue. And she's like, I just bought you some. It's all gone. It's all. We used a whole bucket of it. Um, uh, so, and, and, and that's not. Everybody processes differently. But I. And women are really good at it because we're allowed to cry. And men aren't. So. If I can get a man to cry and use a box of tissue and scream in a pillow, woo, that screaming in the pillow, that's like a letting the lid off. So it dislodges things. Sometimes when people are almost there and they're not quite there and it's not quite happening, it's not quite coming up. If I can just get them to 
open the floodgate by one good loud scream and a pillow, their emotions will start moving. And so we we do we do do that. Okay, Diane Wiley has a really good question. I love you, and Diane. I also have another question about okay. what your process. Okay. okay. So Diane says, um, with all of your mediumship work, mm -hmm. is it possible Centire can also help someone who is no longer with us who Absolutely. needs help with Centire releases? Yes. This same deceased person is the reason for the trauma on the person you are working on. Yes. So, and I'm going to say yes to that in two ways. Our team toss that goes in to help homeowners that have disturbed energy in the house. Um, we use this to actually help people who are deceased, who are stuck, troubled, blocked. That emotional energy can carry on into the afterlife. And so there is a physicality with spirit as well. It may not um, be the exact same physicality that we're aware of in our body, but there is a physicality. And so oftentimes, um, I'll get in touch with the energy of a spirit who's sad, depressed. We've worked with people in spirit who've killed people and now they're dead and now they can't move on. They can't ascend to heaven because there's so much shame, guilt, remorse, or pity or self pity or whatever they're going through. And there's sometimes where I'll just break down and start centering my using my body to release their energy. And I think the first time that happened, you were kind of freaked out, huh? Were you when I when you saw me do that? A little bit, because you were like, because I was like, you were really like crying, like really going, going yeah. Crazy. I went for it, <laughs> yeah. and I just let myself feel as an empath. We can do that. We can let ourselves feel what other people feel, and we can help them process it. And and the other thing that it does is it gives that empathetic touch, like they understand that you know how they feel. Sometimes just that understanding alone, people just need to be understood. That's why talk therapy, they go back over and over again. They just want somebody to hear them, to understand them, to know what they're feeling. And then it, it, it can be released. So that's yes to that one. And then the one you said where uh, it's helping my, um, my client. So if my client is getting in touch with their loved ones who crossed and maybe they have unfinished business together, or maybe that client is just feeling... So I'll do this exercise during Centire. Sometimes when I'm led to do it, every session is a little different, but sometimes I'll say, okay, imagine your mother or your father, whoever it is they're, they're dealing with in spirit, standing in front of you. And boy, those emotions will come right up. Because if they can picture their loved one standing in front of them, and something happens with that exchange of energy between mm -hmm. them. And, they, and, I, and moms, we do this a lot with kids. I'll say, imagine your child standing in front of you. What do you think your child feels? And when you can imagine, even if it's going to make you feel guilty for a moment to imagine what your child feels, if you can get in touch with that and you can help them process that, even if they're alive, it's going to help them energetically. So because we are all connected on a spiritual level, we're all connected, whether we're alive, whether we're past, whether we're here or there, you can help your children process their emotions through your body. And then it can heal your guilt as well, because once they no longer feel the pain of whatever it is you think that happened or did, or maybe somebody else did to them um, that you weren't able to shield them from, then once, once they can release a little of that energy, the attachment to the guilt, it can be released as well. It's quite amazing. But yeah, it absolutely can help clients connect with loved ones in spirit. And we all just have a real good healing, feel good time. And one time a client said to me that she, I saw her mother in spirit standing behind her as she was doing her session. And at that time, I think I went to her house. So we were on in her living room on her couch and I saw her mother and I didn't know her mother was passed, but I knew this was her mother. I just knew it. And so I saw this woman stand behind her and it was like, as she was processing and crying, I saw her mother reach into her. And it was almost like she had the, the, as her mother reached into her and it was like she was pulling the energy out as my client was having the biggest release of almost I've ever seen a, a client have at that same time. And then she just kind of went, I'm done. It's gone. My, mo my mother was here. And I go, yeah, your mother was here. And she goes, it's like she just reached in and pulled it out. Wow. And I go, that's because you were willing to release it. So she came to help you. So it can even help. We can help them. They can help us. It's so that's amazing. a good segue to the question I want you to share is 
when they have their eyes closed mm -hmm. and they're doing their thing, what are you doing? Because you do all that crazy stuff yeah. with your hands. So, yeah. So, um, so I, I'm the only one watching you, but you have your eyes closed. So um, I'm, I'm watching and feeling the energy. And um, sometimes I will, I can find where the energy is. I'll, I will put my, run my hand sort of uh, not on your body, but about that far away to find it. And I will, I want to say, talk to the energy and, and I'm helping you find it and helping you feel it. And I'm helping you release it with my energy. And so I'm not actually touching you, but sometimes I'll just feel a little spot and pull it out. It's like, um, and then, and then I can see that it gets a little easier for you to breathe or you get in touch with it more or it moves. Sometimes I'll push it out and like I'll, uh, from the back, sometimes I'll way down low. If you have a lot of shame and guilt, that's, that's going to, and disappointment, that disappointment, mm, that's all really low body stuff. And so if, so if, I don't know how to, how to explain how I, how I see it, but I can feel it in my body. I can feel it on my hands. Um, I have a friend named Martin. He's in um, Wales and he's a healer too. And he taught me how to feel like pockets of energy. So, so like if someone's laying on the healing table and, and you run your hand, if there's a tear in the fabric of their energy, your hand will go down more. There's like an absence. It's really weird. So I, but I can also in my conscious mind, my, um, mind's eye it's almost like if i put a flashlight down your body i can see black spots where the energy gets stuck and so yeah i'll use my intention and my energy to gently help you move the energy and sometimes i'll just yank them out and they'll just come because they're ready to go and you're willing and you're open we can just yank them right out and so so it depends it depends on you know what your body's ready to do that i'm feeling and it's a lot of intuitive work too, because I, you know, I've trained people to do this, but I can only train people who have intuition, you know, because you really have to trust your intuition and especially empaths are really good at this. And the other thing empaths, I'm going to tell you guys, if you ever want to train in doing this for other people, you're, I know you're probably thinking, oh, but I feel everything everybody else feels. So how can you as an empath sit there and help somebody process all this emotion without taking it home, without being affected by it? And I'm affected by a lot of emotional shit around my family, but this, mm -mm. and the reason is a lot of what they're experiencing have, have come from traumas that I've already healed within myself. And the other thing is, again, I'm up in coach mode. I'm being a coach right now. And so, and I get really excited. I get so happy when I see them healing because I know even if they're feeling a lot of discomfort in that moment, they're healing. And that's exciting to me. So it's a whole different frame of mind. You're, you don't, and then you can always sage yourself, say a little prayer, bring in the light. You know, there, there are things you do so you don't take on their energy. But um, when you get to the point where, you know, uh, watching other people heal is so heartwarming to you and you're having compassion, you're helping them process, but you know that they're healing. And you know how good they're going to feel. And it's so rewarding. It's incredibly rewarding. Yeah. Um, so my next question is, because is there a, is, is doing it on Zoom just as effective as yeah. they were in person? Yeah. I'm sure a lot of people right now are wishing that, you know, all things could take place in person. But um, sometimes Zoom is better because you get to set up in your own space, in your environment, in your, a place where you feel secure um lock your bedroom door you know be home alone whatever so in instead of coming to a stranger's house or my home office where you know um it can be a little uncomfortable to be somewhere uh the other thing is that because zoom seems to be a lot better for this than skype because skype there was a, a delay mm -hmm. where zoom i can see exactly what's happening in real time um also, uh, uh, one of the other benefits on doing it on Zoom is that um, sometimes people are are holding on because they think their energy, if they did let it go, it would be too big. And they're almost it's almost like they're trying to protect me in person. Like they don't want to blow on me or, oh, you know, right. they don't want to send their energy at me. And so on on Zoom, 
uh, there's just enough of a separation where they feel a little bit safer just going for it. So it actually can have its benefits um, on Zoom, really. But it works just as well. And well, they can probably just be as loud as they want. Too. And be as they loud as they want, have their own well. pillow, their own tissue, yeah. their own glass of water, their own environment. They can go take a nap right after without having to get in the car. I used to mm -hmm. have to make sure that everybody went through a recovery time and have snacks there for them and stuff. So it can be a shorter session on Zoom because you can go and get mm -hmm. yourself a snack and take a nap if you want right then. So it actually can work a lot better. Uh, Diane asks again, once the energy is released, do you send the energy that is released from your client to, is it Gaia, and let her process it and she knows what to do with it? I send it to the Earth. So I said to Mother Earth, Mother Earth, this planet absolutely knows what to do with it. Um, so I just sent it one time I saw um, in it, this, this was very interesting and it's really quite rare. But one of the things that can happen is that if somebody's holding on to a, uh, a dark entity and that entity is feeding off their fear, once we release that fear, the entity sometimes goes. And we were at my apartment, and um, I, when I was to work out of my home office at my apartment, and I was, we kind of went into a spontaneous Sentai session with somebody, and there were some entities coming out of her, dark, sticky, thick ones that were feeding off of her fear. And so um, as they were coming out, she was making noises. I mean, it was like an exorcist. It was like an exorcism. Um, growling noises, she was talking in different languages, and this thing came out of her, and it swooped down my hallway and tried to go into my doll. And I go, oh no, right down, down into the earth. Bye, love you, bye. So, and I'm not afraid of that kind of energy because that's the kind of work I do. And so I don't call it Gaia, but it doesn't matter the name, it's the intention. And so, yeah, I absolutely send it to the earth. The earth can transform energy and grow beautiful things out of it. So. Um, that's what Mother Earth does. So that's what I do. All right. And then Kelly said the, what was it called? The va the vagus nerve yeah. is the nerve that runs from your brain behind your ear and basically touches all of the organs in the body. Oh, that's why it goes. Dun, 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 dun. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. Yes. Because sometimes I'll see energy way low in the body and it'll kind of move up and transfer all through interesting thank you for that yeah that's fantastic yeah. very cool um so that's basically what it, what it is even though i've explained it and tried to give you some examples um, won't be what you <laughs> no but it is so incredibly worth it and it, it is it is so healing and so transforming and um uh I'll take you back to, I was talking to my friend Ari. I'm not sure if she's still on, but what happened when she um, called me, okay. Um, she called me, um, I was freaking out because I had ordered some oils that I wanted my dad to try and he was sick with cancer. And so rather than when I heard the news about him being sick, I didn't, I didn't process that properly. I was just went into, well, we got to heal him. I got to call my friends. What should we do? La, la, la. You know, all my healer friends. And so I had all this fear and desperation kind of trapped inside of me. Well, the company that was shipping the oils to him shipped him to the wrong place and shipped him to me. And then they were going to wait until I sent it back to them to get the new shipment. And all I kept thinking is he needs it now. He's dying. And so I, I was freaking out and all of that, fear and sadness started coming up. And so I knew what was happening. I wasn't afraid of that, but I was still trying to stay in the mode of calling them up and getting them to ship the thing and trying to stay in my head when my, really I just needed to release. And so um, I was fighting it a little bit, but it was happening. It was happening. And, and that sensation where my lips and hands got really tight as I'm trying to breathe through this, Ari called me because she was trying to help me solve this problem. And and, and so I'm on the phone with her and I, and she's like, are you okay? And I'm, I'm kind of like processing and stuff, and I couldn't talk because <laughs> the energy was coming out of my mouth. And she's like, what is going on with you? I'm, like, I'm okay. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just processing. <laughs> and she's like, do you need 911? I think you need to call 911. <laughs> And I'm like, no, I'm okay. <gasps> Wait a minute. <laughs> Poor Ari. 
and was like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> it was all right here. Oh and it God. was, I couldn't even talk. It was hysterical. And I kept trying to, I, I kept trying to, if I could, I, I still wanted to solve the problem. And so I didn't want to hang up on her thinking I was dying or needed 911. So I, but the, the it was too far into the process to back out now it's happening it's it's like having a baby it's happening it's right here and yet i couldn't but i was trying to i was trying to tell her to hang on tight this is a pro you know, it's going to be okay just give me a few minutes and let me do you know and so i tried to ease her mind take care of her in the middle of a process while i'm freaking out about my da dad and trying to get oh god it was hilarious and so yeah, that was that. So uh, Ari, I wonder if you remember that day. I bet you do. Roseanne has a question. Okay. Is there more success if a client opens themselves opens themselves up with intention? Yeah, and the tension really should be. Um, it's a process of allowing rather than forcing. So the intention is just simply be open, and allow whatever to happen happen. And your feelings are vulnerable vulnerabilities yeah. down yeah. So, yeah yeah and just go you know because a lot of people come in with a little bit too much intention they'll be like mm -hmm. oh, i'm gonna get this done we're gonna get a heal and it's like okay well better if you just relax trust the process tr trust the whole spiritual aspect whatever is meant to be released that day will be released that day and whatever isn't is for another time and so it's not a matter of forcing so the intention should be of your highest and best release for you that day so, and we even, we even have it in our prep sheet. Um, I say, we will set our intention for your body to release whatever it's ready for today. You might release a lot or just a little. Either way, you will learn this valuable tool to practice on your own. I will intuitively know how to guide your process and when we're finished. You will begin to feel a sense of peace as well. And so you set your intention to just let your body do the work. And, and you're going to let go and you're going to be present. Now, we do say in the beginning, um, it's not in the paperwork, but after we read this, I say, okay, because a lot of people, you know, once you start practicing spiritual principles, they go, well, but aren't we supposed to not think and, and say negative things? Because, you know, I don't want to create negativity in my life. And if I believe all this negativity, then, you know, so we say what we call the safe space declaration in the beginning. And we say, we have you close your eyes again you're breathing through your mouth and you're i just i go at first i say right now i want you to give your your body a note of appreciation every morning when you wake up your body is there for you so just say thank you to your body so do that and they do that now i want you to make a commitment that right now for this process you are here and present for your body whatever your body needs to release you will be there to help it and you will stay present with it and then I say, we're going to declare to the universe that during your session, nothing that you think, feel, believe, or express has any power over you, your life, your future, or those, your loved ones. You are safe to feel and process all that yicky stuff. So we say that. We set our intention with that. So that you know for that time period, nothing that you think or feel or believe, even if it's a negative thought about a loved one that you truly love, but right now you just have to hate them for a minute or whatever. Um, and it's all confidential. So um, you can feel whatever you feel and know that that energy is not going to go and hurt them. You're not hexing them. You're not putting a bad juju on them. You're just processing energy. That's all it is. Feelings aren't right or wrong. They're just feelings. So they just need to be felt and they need to be allowed. And once you're done, then we say the prayer at the end, nothing that you have felt or or thought or expressed has any power over you your life your future or those are your loved ones and now we are going to declare the your highest truth that you are a powerful creative being a, a being of light capable of creating everything you truly desire and so it is amen <laughs> and we do that with sage and we clear your energy off with said now i now i use sage i have to take people out back because i was saging them off in here and setting off the <laughs> So we make sure that there's a safe process for you to do this and that um, you, we honor all aspects of this process. And, you know, I've only had one person that, that I tried really hard to work with and really didn't get anywhere. Another one recently, a man, didn't feel he got quite enough out of it. Um, I think he, he's, he's just not quite ready. 
but his partner came, his wife came and she had an amazing session. So it's all depends on when you're ready. Um, the, the male figure that I really couldn't work with, I couldn't get him. And this was kind of a real learning lesson with, um, um, psychology. I had to go back to my psychology books and look this up, but, um, I couldn't get him to connect from his thoughts to his body. So he, he said he could, he said he had feelings, but he couldn't tell me where they were and what they felt like. And he couldn't really describe them and he couldn't really locate them and he couldn't really process them. He was very disconnected. And um, I found out why I found out that when he was about 10 years old, some real tragic event happened and that he was told by an adult that it wasn't natural to feel. And I think his, your mind is so powerful. People, if you tell a child something like that, bam, they, from that day forward, they have decided I'm not going to feel. Um, and the other thing was, um, it's called alexithemia. So it's, it's, um, a detachment from the head and the body. And, and, and then tragic things can happen to people and they don't have a trauma response. So, um, in his case, at one point, I think he got shot. And I go, well, that must have made you feel something. Weren't you scared? And he's like, no, I just need, I knew I needed to go to the hospital. I knew, I thought, hmm, I've been shot. I, I should go and, and get, go to the hospital. But he never felt scared or scared. Mm -hmm. But that's rare. And um, I think even if I had been able to work with him ongoing, we might have, once we can connect the head with the body, that's the key. That's why we work on that, feeling the body. Um, then you can process so any others no that's it that was really fun guys uh think about Maybe your announcements booking a session i have announcements <laughs> Do you want to talk a little bit about your Back to Future movie and stuff like that? yeah we're offering um you know i know this is a hard time for people and sometimes people really can't do a full hour long reading right now and they just have you know one question or um, they're, they're concerned. This is a time in our lives right now where we're, we're having to go in, we're having to cocoon. And at first people are, um, you know, they're bummed. Then they're kind of panicked because now they're not at work and they just want to go back to work. And, and then, you know, you go through, and there's like phases of this, of this yeah. process that we're all going through. And now we're kind of stepping into the phase where I, I want you guys to explore the idea that maybe you're considering you don't want to go right back to your old life once this, this gets released. Was your job your dream job? Was that really, I mean, yeah, I mean, you may need it to pay your bills. And so you're freaking out because you're not having that right now. But, but really ask yourself, was I living the, my best life, the life I really, really wanted? Do I want to go back to that? Or is there something more that I want to create in my future? So we're calling it the Back to the Future reading. It's 30 minutes, 30 minutes, 30 minutes and we're just going to explore that idea. You know, do you want to recreate what you were creating or do you, is there something different for you? So uh, our little Back to the Future reading, I'm really excited about it. people. I've had really good response on that one. And then if you just have one question, we can do a quick 20 minute reading, really affordable. Minutes. Huh? 30 minutes. The, the one question? Oh, the one question is yeah. 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Yeah. So, um, or you can do a 30 minute reading if you just really have that one person that you want to talk to in spirit or just a few questions about life issue stuff. So we've got the one question mini reading. Yeah. That's 15 minutes. We got a 30 minute option if you want to talk to spirit or get a little bit of a longer card reading. We got your specialized back to the future reading. We have the past life or past, present, future reading. Yeah, triple. The triple element reading. Triple element. And we have your one hour. Which is a special right now for 185. 185. Right. So if you want a whole hour and you want to do a little bit of everything, you want to talk to people, you want some card reading, um, we can get it all done in an hour. And the special price is 185. So we're really trying to make it very affordable for you guys and um, and make sure that you get your needs met while you're doing this and that you're you're really, you know, spending some time on yourself and your your your, you know, your spiritual well-being. So that's really what we want to offer. So we have um, Saturday. Saturday. We have, um, and we do it on Zoom, and it's been working really well. Um, uh, we have the virtual intimate group. We have four, four spots left for a group we're having this Saturday. So you can get a mini reading if you want, you know, again, you want to talk to somebody specific in spirit, but you don't want to book a whole hour reading 
And you have the opportunity to watch other people get really beautiful messages as well. So that's going to be this Saturday. I think it's at 2, at two o'clock. Mm -hmm. Four spots available. So check that out on our Facebook page or website. Um, it's really good also for a Mother's Day gift. So check out, um, we're creating a Mother's Day a contest, right? So we have a contest, yes, on so Facebook right now. On Facebook right and now. And that's for a free one-hour reading. And that's for a free one-hour reading. So we really want to honor moms in spirit, on the planet, daughters, and you have gift sons. And we have gift certificates you can buy for mom. Um, so that's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. We have three more intimate group circles in May as well. Oh, yeah. So if you can't make this Saturday, but you do want to do one, check that out. Um, next wait, Wednesday night, 6.30, Facebook Live. And I will be doing readings that night. So um, that's a lot of fun. Um, da, 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 da. That's yeah, that's it. So thanks, guys, for joining me tonight. It was really fun. I hope that you got something out of it, that you learned a little bit more about Centaur and what it is. Um, don't try this at home. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> Feel your feelings, but if you really want to get a good, strong healing session in there, book one of those. It is powerful. And by the way, all my work is guaranteed, um, except for the um, the seminars, which we're not doing right now because we can't do them publicly. So everything is money back guarantee. I mean, I think that if someone believes in their work, they should offer that occasionally for whatever reason on the rare occasion that I can't connect or that spirit's telling me to refer you to somewhere else or something like that. Uh, it's no problem. Um, money back guarantee. All our work. So like the man that, that I couldn't work with, the one time I couldn't work with somebody in Centire, we gave him his money back. No questions asked. Um, you get what you want and what you need out of, our, out of this work. You should feel that it was worth it to you. So God bless you all and I hope you're staying safe. Hang in there. Um, you know, take really good care of yourself right now, especially when, when we're not sure are we going to you know, are we going to get out of the house this week? What's happening? What, uh, are my loved ones going to get sick? You know, just put yourself, douse yourself in white light and really take good, good, good care of yourself. And I'm sending you lots of love. So do something nice for yourself today and something nice for somebody else. So have a wonderful yeah. night. Okay. Bye. I got to end it live video now. <laughs> <laughs>